So in today's lecture, we will talk about uh, second order circuits. We're not gonna go uh, into all the material of this chapter. We will introduce uh, the types of, uh, of circuits. And then we will see what is the difference between the first order circuits and second order circuits. So here in the second order circuits, we have uh, more than one energy storing devices. And uh, we will be looking in specific at uh, RLC in this lecture, RLC series circuit with the uh, source of free uh, circuit. Okay, so uh, here at the beginning, we will talk about uh, the initial uh, values and the type of initial values and the final values we should be able to find from that circuit. And as I said, the source of free series RLC circuit will be discussed in details. So as I said, uh, second order circuits are basically uh, a solution to uh, second order differential equation. And this second order differential equation is coming from the existence of two energy storing devices in my circuit. In this case, as uh, you have seen, we have here uh, in this RLC series circuit, we have the L and the C. This is a parallel uh, circuit that has the inductor and the capacitor connected in parallel. And then we have here another two circuits that have two different values of inductors and capacitors. This is gonna result into two different values of uh, time constant in my circuit, which basically uh, as in general results into an exponential function as we have seen in first order circuits. However, with the existence of the two time, distinguished two time constants, that's gonna make it a uh, second order uh, uh, second order solution. So working with a second order system is a bit harder than the first order, as you will see later on. We will not only need to find our initials for the for the zero minus zero plus and uh, infinity, but we also need to find the derivative. So for example, if I am looking at uh, at finding the current, you will notice later on in the course that we will need also to look at uh, and find the value of the derivative of the of the current. So not only the current at the zero uh, plus, for example, which is the same as the zero minus in, in case of the inductor, uh, but also we need to find the derivative of the zero plus with time. So in this case, uh, always keep in mind that the, the voltage for the capacitor is the one that is continuous and the current for the inductor is the one that is continuous. You have to keep in mind that you use the correct polarity for the voltage and for the current. In other words, the passive convention for the capacitor as the when the current is entering the positive terminal, right? However, in the inductor, uh, the current is also entering the positive terminal of the inductor. So always keep this in mind. So let's look here at this example. In this example, we should be able to to see what do we mean by finding those initial and final values for that circuit. So here in this circuit, we need uh, to find the, the initial values, which is the zero current, zero plus, and voltage zero plus, which means this one is for the inductor. And this one is for the, for the capacitor because capacitors, capacitor is the one that has a continuous voltage where the voltage 
before the switching equals the voltage after the switching and that's why we call it v0 minus and v0 plus for the inductor we have the current before the switching and the current after the switching both are equal so that's why we have i0 minus so from the from the zero minus which is the steady state we get a value for the zero plus so let's look here at uh, this circuit here we have a switch that has been closed for a long time so this is very important so the switch was closed for a long time and then at t equals zero the switch was opened what does this mean this means that at uh, zero minus at the zero minus moment t equals to zero minus i had this switch closed not just not just that capacitors for when it's for long time under dc conditions what happens to the capacitors capacitors will be treated as as do you remember as open circuit this is correct so capacitors are treated as an open circuit and what, what about inductors under DC conditions, inductors are treated as, as a short circuit. And that's why this circuit represent my T equal zero minus case. So in this case, I have here the inductor treated as short circuit. I have the capacitor here treated as is open circuit so in this case now i can calculate the zero minus so let me call this one zero minus and i can call this i also zero minus right so looking at the circuit i can see easily that this simple circuit now can be calculated as I zero minus equals to this voltage 12 volt, which is basically across both of them. So 12 divided by four plus two. And in this case, I have I zero minus as I zero minus as two ampere. And don't forget that this I zero minus also is I zero plus. We have learned this from the boundary condition for the, for the inductor. This inductor, notice that this current is going through the inductor. This inductor is having a current, an initial current of two ampere. So this is the I zero minus, which is the same as I zero plus. Now, what about the capacitor? The capacitor, right now, this is the V zero minus, which is across the capacitor that has been treated as an open circuit. So if I find the voltage drop across this two ohm resistor, it will be the same as the voltage drop across the, the 0.1 farad capacitor. So how can I find this V0 minus? This V0 minus, I can find it using voltage division, right? It's a clear that a voltage, a voltage division here does exist, and this in case would be 12. And the, the ratio is two, which is the resistor of interest that you want to find the voltage drop. Notice that the voltage division here, if I am to, you know, color this with red and then color this node with orange. Now notice that I will color the remaining node here. This is whole thing as, as you can see, the two ohm and the four ohm are connected in series and the equivalent of four and two is connected across the 12 volt and that's why i said i can use the voltage division here 
to calculate the voltage across the 2 ohm, which is the same as the voltage across the capacitor. So I have here 2 divided by 2 plus 4. So it's the ratio. The ratio of 2 to the total resistance. The total resistance is, sorry, this is 4. The total resistance is 6, right? So I have here 2 divided by 6. And in this case, V no, V0 uh, zero minus, that equals to V0 plus, because of the capacitor, and this equals to 4 volt. Yes, go ahead. So a pattern I began to notice is, do if two elements or more elements share the same input and output nodes, they have the same voltages always. Is this correct? If, if again, the two resistors. Sorry. If two elements share the same nodes, input and output, they have the same voltage. Am I correct? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Here, you, have, you can see that four and two are sharing this node that is colored with a blue, but they don't have the same voltage across. What I mean is they, they have two elements that share the same input node and the same output node. Same input node and same output node. No, we, we don't look at it this way. We don't look at it this way. We look at, we look at it that both of them they're sharing the same current. Since they are in series, they're sharing the same current. And since they're sharing the same current, this voltage source is across the equivalent of those two. Any two elements in parallel, they share the same voltage and trough. Yes, thank you, Leah. Right? So here, in this case, we have those two elements, the four and the two ohm. They are only sharing one node, right? But the output here, the output here is only across the two ohm. The output is only across the two ohm. So what's this 12 volt do 12 volt doing? 12 volt is applied across the equivalent of the of, of this two and four ohms that are connected in series. It's extremely important to know to classify them, what type of what what topology they are connected uh, with. Here, four and two are connected in series because they're sharing the same current, right? They have the same current going through them. No other elements are, are connected with them. Those are open circuit. That's why the current I0, mi I0 minus here is going all the way this way and coming back. It's not splitting anywhere else. It's not splitting anywhere else. The whole current is going through those two devices because those are open circuit. There is no current going this way. Make sense? Okay. So this is how we calculate the initial values. We have seen we have seen this before. We have seen this in first order circuits. Okay. Not a big deal. This is not a new. Now what is a new as finding the derivative for the current and for the voltage. 
now we know that the derivative for the for the current comes from the inductor so we have to understand how can we get this derivative so if we look at our circuit here this is the circuit after the switching so this one is after the switch was moved after it was moved right now the switch here is is open and that's why you see this two ohm here has been eliminated from from the circuit there is no two ohm resistor and parallel with the capacitor anymore so what's going to happen keep in mind that the current for the inductor is not going to change so here I still have this current that belongs to the inductor is not going to change. What does this mean? This means that I0 minus equals to I0 plus equals to 2 ampere, right? That's agreed, that's agreed upon. But what's going to happen here is that this current now becomes the same as the current for the inductor, uh, sorry, for the capacitor. So in this case, I can say, and this now is also IC zero plus, right? Why? Because this is the, this current is going through the going through the capacitor. So this is also IC zero plus, right? So what do I know about, about this capacitor? What I know is C dV C zero plus equals to I C zero plus is that right what is where did where did i get this from from i equal for the capacitor as i equals to cdv over dt but what moment what moment i am at right now i am at t equals zero plus right so i will be emphasizing stressing on the zero plus moment in my equations i'm at I'm at right, I'm right at that moment. So if that's the case, then I can say dVc zero plus equals to IC zero plus. Yes, go ahead. Divided by divided by C. Right? And here the V is really meant to be the VC, right? This is the VC because it is across the, the capacitor. So you either say VC or you keep it V and you know what you're doing. That should be fine. Yes, go ahead. A little bit off topic, but do you need to be a, does a circuit need to be at least second order to create alternating current? No, here we're, here we're not dealing with... Uh, an AC signal. Here we're dealing with uh, a DC signal. So you can look here at the circuit at a circuit that has an abrupt change due to the switching being closed or open. We're not dealing with AC. We're dealing with a signal that had a DC value for a long time and then all of a sudden I changed this circuit physically by closing or opening a switch. This is now going to result into going into a final DC signal. And that's why if you recall, we say that uh, the zero minus is DC conditions under DC condition, conditions. 
and the infinity is under DC conditions. So we're going from a from a DC conditions to a DC conditions. However, the transition is from one steady state to another steady state as exponential, right? It was exponential. We've seen it exponential in the first order uh, circuits. And now we're gonna see it also with different types, exponentials and non-exponential in the second order circuits. Is this clear? So we're not, it is not AC. It is not an alternating current. It is a DC current. However, this going from one state to another, the transition is the transient. That's what we call the transient response. But it's not an AC. We're gonna come to the AC analysis later on, most probably in next lecture, okay? So right now we're dealing, as we've said, for a circuit that has that has seen an abrupt change in DC conditions. And that's why it goes from DC to DC. It goes from steady state to a steady state. But now here we are introducing a new uh, initials that we need to find. Not we said we need now to also find the derivative. So this is dVc over dt. We forgot the uh, dVc over dt, right? So this is dVc over dt. And this equals to IC zero plus over C. Now, I have found the IC zero plus that I said this IC zero plus is the same as I zero plus for the inductor because why? Because this capacitor is in series with that inductor. So it should take the same current. And that's why I said the IC zero plus here equals the IC zero plus equals to the I zero plus. So this equals to to what I found divided by 0.1 and this is 20 volt per second. Right? So this is the derivative of the voltage and this derivative of the voltage belongs to the, to the capacitor and we took advantage of the current knowing the current and that's why we found the derivative of the voltage as zero plus. Now, what about the derivative of the current as zero plus? So let's have a look. The derivative of the current as zero plus is basically going back to the circuit that I have used here at zero plus moment. And Finding the VL, now what do we know about this inductor? If we want the DI zero plus over DT, then I need to find VL. Why? Because VL is L DI. So if I am to write it in that moment, I will write it as the following. So I'll write it as VL zero plus equals to L di zero plus over dt. This is what I want. Where do I get this one? I need to find VL zero plus. Where is VL zero plus? Remember we, we said that this whole thing under the zero plus moment this whole circuit. So I can call this one as also zero plus VS zero plus. So if you take KVL, let's take a KVL here. What are you gonna end up with? Minus 12 plus four I zero plus. Remember we are at uh, zero plus. So here I can call this one also.
zero plus. And this one also, if you want, you can call it zero plus. So VL zero plus equals two. Uh, this is what we have used. Writing KVL will be minus 12 plus four I zero plus plus VL zero plus plus VC or V this one. zero plus equals to zero. Now, substituting the V zero plus with what I have found earlier, which was four volts. I need VL zero plus four times I zero plus, which is four times two, which is eight. Now rearranging, you get VL zero plus to be zero. So going back to, to here, VI, uh, DI zero plus over DT, that equals to VL zero plus over L equals zero over 0.25, which is the inductance. So the derivative for the initial DI zero plus over DT equals to zero. Is that clear? So as I said, I'll repeat it here for, for clarity. This is at t equals zero plus. I can redraw the circuit again, just to simplify things. So I have here four ohm. I have here the inductor. I have here the capacitor. I have the, the source, 12 volts. So this one is four ohm. Now this current is I zero plus. This inductor is VL zero plus. This one is V zero plus, right? So when I took KVL here, I had minus 12 plus 4i zero plus plus VL zero plus plus V zero plus equals to zero. Now VL zero plus equals to 12 minus four times two, right? Minus four, which is the V zero plus. We found that this is equal to zero. And we said that from the Inductor, we know that VL zero plus equals to L DI zero plus over DT. Since this one is zero, then DI zero plus over DT is also zero. Is that clear? So that's how we uh, use the, the derivative or the values from the other uh, energy storing device to help me find the derivative for my 
the initial derivative for my uh, device that I'm interested to find. So this is for the inductor, right? And the dV zero plus over dt is for the capacitor. Now the last stage, which is infinity. We, we have done those before in first order. This is the first time we do this in the second order. But for the first one, the, Z, the T zero plus and the T equals to infinity, we have seen before when we did the first order circuits. What about this? What about the T equal to infinity? What's going to happen to my capacitor and my inductor at T equals to infinity? Can somebody tell me? After I open the switch and then I let it open for a long time, what's going to happen to my capacitor and my inductor? What happened to the capacitor? The capacitor will be replaced with what? I, instead of saying disappear, we want to uh, describe it with, with a clear short circuit for what? Capacitor or, or inductor? Open circuit for? Open circuit for capacitor, that's correct. That's correct. And short circuit for inductor. So remember, we're going from steady state into a second steady state. So that's why the T0 minus is called steady state. It's the last moment in a steady state. And the T equals to infinity is the second steady state. So we're going from a steady state into a steady state. The transition is a transient. That's why the exponential function and first order circuit that we have seen is exponential. The transition is exponential, but we're going from a steady state into a, steady st a second steady state. So at t equals to infinity, which is this moment after I open the switch and for a long time, I open the switch and it was open for a long time means that I have reached t equals to infinity. As you can see here, the capacitor has been replaced by an open circuit and the inductor has been replaced by short circuit. Here, open circuit. Short circuit. For inductor, open circuit. For, for capacitor. Well, it's an open circuit. So right away, the current would be, current would be an open circuit, would be zero. So I infinity is zero. What about the V infinity? If the current is zero, what's gonna happen to the voltage? Try it, try it, take a KVL. No, the voltage will not be zero. The voltage across the capacitor will be the same as the voltage across the source. And I'll show you, I'll show you how. Take a KVL. If you take a KVL, then KVL for L, minus 12 plus 4i plus v equals to 0. Is that right? But what did we say about i? i is 0 because it's an open circuit, right? And this means 
the V, which is the voltage across. So I can put here, if you want, just to give you the same taste, infinity. All right. Right? Yes. So just because we have an open circuit doesn't necessarily mean zero volts. I mean, one way to picture it is you could pretend that there's a wire between the plus and minus with no one 12 volts minus B ground. Yes. Yes. It's not zero. The V would be zero if I put a short circuit here. Then the V would be zero. But if it's an open circuit, it is whatever the voltage that you're seeing that you have here at the source. Why? Because your I now becomes zero. Look at this KVM. Make sense? Okay, so V infinity is 12 volt. Now let's look at this uh, source of free RLC circuit. The word source of free here means that a circuit was at a was operating at, uh, let's say, was at DC for a long time, and then I somehow disconnected it. So at the beginning, before I connected it, there were initial, initial values that are stored in those capacitors and inductors. And that's why here, this V naught that I have here basically represents the integration for minus infinity up to this moment. This moment is the moment that the switching happened. So here, we've seen that before. We've seen that this is a source of free series. This is at t equals zero. This is the, the first moment that this circuit now has been lit by itself. After being, it reached this initial from uh, being connected through a circuit, and now I disconnected it from that circuit, and now the circuit is going to act as a source of free circuit. So that's why when I when I say V naught, which is the initial value in this capacitor, I am looking at the integration of the current from minus infinity, long time before I have to start from the from the first moment, which is the minus infinity, up to the moment of the action, which is here at zero. At t equals zero, the action happened, right? So this is the V naught. The current in the inductor is I naught. So if you have a circuit, for example, if you do have a circuit and the switch, it makes sense that you can call this as also V0 plus, right? And this is V0, V0 plus, which is the, the value inherited from the zero minus from the previous, from, from the previous stage when the, before the switch was moving. Assuming that this circuit was hooked up somehow to a circuit and then you using a switch, I put it outside of that, circuit that was, that was connected to. So now this is the circuit that has initials at zero. And now what's that circuit going to do? In this case, as I said, this would be my initial value for the voltage and this would be my initial value for the, for the current due to the energy stored in the current and in, in the capacitor and in the inductor. Okay, so let's apply a KVL. If we apply a KVL here, just to, to, to see how is that equation is gonna look like? Where is this second order differential equations? Remember, if you write a KVL, then this KVL would be RI 
plus VL. So writing a KVL, this KVL, what do I have? I have RI plus VL plus V naught equals to zero. What is VL? It is LDI over DT. So this one is VL. What is V naught? It is this integration that we have talked about, right? So I have RI LDI over DT plus one over C integration from minus infinity up to T. T is the moment of the, of the switching. I tau D tau. Now, if I take the derivative on this circuit, what am I gonna, going to do? I'm going to get rid of this integral. Yes, go ahead. So what part makes something second order? Because like you have a charge and uh, the derivative of that is current and the derivative of that will create a second derivative of charge. I'm coming, I'm coming to I'm coming to this. I'm coming to this, right? Write the next step of this equation. Now, if you take the derivative here, what do you get? If you take the derivative, so here you get R di over dt plus L d squared i over dt squared, and then d over dt for this integral. Now this derivative will cancel this integral and you're gonna end up with this equation. After rearranging, of course, dividing by L, rearranging, put this one at the, at the front and then put this one as second and this one as third you can and dividing by l you're going to end up with this equation and this is a second order differential equation now the solution to this second order differential equation is also from exponential form and it has the in general as we'll see later on the form of A E S T. But again, you need to make sure that you know how to calculate the initials. We've seen how to do that, right? So we have seen this and we are we have also seen how to calculate the initial for the derivative. Right? We have seen how to do this. Okay, so in this case, if the solution is from exponential form as well, A, E, S, T, for this second order differential equation. Now, if you substitute this solution, this general solution into this equation, you will end up with A, E, S, T, times S squared plus R over L, S plus one over L, L, C equals to zero. And this is what we call the characteristic equation. In any second order differential equation, if you substitute this general form solution that is exponential, you're gonna get S squared plus R over L, S plus one over L, C. So, this one and one over LC we we can talk about that later we can talk about it later just to avoid any uh, uh, confusion to your colleagues. But what we care about right now is this characteristic equation, the solution to this characteristic equation. 
So this characteristic equation, as you can see, solving for S, which is this constant, is going to have two roots based on A x squared plus b x plus c equals to zero, right? Solving for x is going to give you minus b plus minus b squared minus 4 ac divided by 2a. So solving for, for the s, then I have s1 as minus alpha, so we're gonna call this as alpha, which is r over 2l, if you calculate the s12 here. What are you gonna get? So b is rl, so I have here r over l plus minus squared R over L squared minus four AC right so this is C this is B if you compare it with my equation, and A is 1, right? So you're going to end up with this divided by, by 2. And then if you rearrange where you have here, let me rearrange. I think it's rearranged here. OK, so S1, 2. R over 2L plus minus. Now take this 2 inside becomes R over 2L squared. And the 4 would cancel minus 1 over LC. So this one we call it alpha, and this one we call it omega naught. Now, S1 and 2 are the natural frequencies, as we will see later on. So, so here, we have, now this is a squared, right? Let's see, sorry. One over LC. So this is omega squared, and this one would be alpha squared. So we have here, S1 is minus alpha plus square root of alpha squared minus omega naught squared. And S2 is minus alpha minus alpha squared minus omega naught squared. Right? So now omega naught is 1 over square root of LC and alpha is R over 2L. So here we will define three cases based on the values of alpha and omega naught. If alpha is a greater than omega naught, we're going to call this one over damped response. And the response is going to be like this, as you can see here. In this case, I have, as we can, as we have seen, two real and negative S11, 
And the uh, solution now here is going to be IT equals to A1, E to the power S1, T, A2, E to the power S2, T. We found S1 and S2. We need to find those constants based on the initial values. So this is the first case over damped when alpha is greater than omega naught. Now, when alpha equals to omega naught, in this case, the system is a critically damped. And in this case, the solution, if you want uh, uh, the proof for how did we get this expression for the critically damped, damped it is uh, in the book it's a bit lengthy but uh, uh, for those who would like to know how did we get this function they can refer to the textbook and they can see all the steps that uh, has been done in order to come up with this expression for the critically damped in this case we have as you can see the critically damped as this function with also two constants, A2 and A1, that is an exponential function multiplied by a linear term, which is the time here. So this is for a critically damped. I have repeated roots here, right? For the critically damped, because alpha equals to omega naught. Now for the underdamped, in this case, alpha is less than omega naught. And in this case, I have an imaginary number. So in this case, the solution to, to this would be from this form. An exponential function that is decaying with time. Right? So this is going to be the solution to my function if I have alpha that is less than omega naught. Omega naught is what we call the undamped natural frequency or the resonant frequency. And omega d is called the damped natural frequency. So you can see that this exponential function has been decaying because it is multiplied by this exponential function. So we have three types of signals. Uh, over damped, critically damped, and under, under damped. So we kind of classify those, uh, those uh, circuits with uh, th this is two pi over Omega D is the is the period for that signal. And because it is multiplied by this exponential function, it's decaying this way. So the the amplitude is decaying. Did I answer your question? Is omega dt yeah so this is sine omega dt cosine omega dt you work 
Okay, so uh, we have three types, as I said, uh, of uh, of transition, of transient functions in this RLC uh, series, uh, source of free circuit. And then the behavior is defined by the, the damping in that circuit. So it depends on what kind of damping we can call the circuit to be either either over damped, critically damped, or under damped. Now, an oscillatory response is possible due to the presence of those two type energy storing elements that were... Okay, so here, let me see. Now, let's look at this example here to understand how did we calculate those initials. So the current in an RLC circuit is described by, by this. So the second order differential equation is given to me, right? So if you recall, and the initial as zero is 10 ampere, and the derivative also as zero is zero. So you can you can look at those ones. Now we remember when, when we talked about the source of free, we did not see that, but you can still, if you want, consider that this is a zero, a zero plus. Here, because we're not talking about uh, the previous, Zero minus. We're not. We're not. We, we did not talk about it. Here was given to me as zero, where basically defines the initial value. But if you think about it, assuming that there was somehow a switch, and then this switch was moved, basically, this is the zero plus that came from the zero minus as well, right? So here we need to find the current i t. So how do we do this? Now remember, based on uh, this second order differential equation, if you substitute the IT with the general uh, form, you are going to end up with the characteristic equation that we talked about. And now the solutions here, for the S would be would be this because now this is gonna be B. So this is A, B, and C. So A is one, B is ten, and C is twenty-five. Then you can find the the natural frequencies S one and S the S one two using the equation that we have shown earlier. And you will see that here you have a repeated root, which means that you have a critically damped response. Critically damped response means that the general, the solution is from the form of A1 plus A2 T A to the power ST, right? This was the the solution for the minus, basically here, alpha T right away using the alpha minus alpha. So this is the solution for critically done. So what you need to do now, using those initial condition, initial values that were given to you to calculate A1 and A2. You found alpha, right? Minus five. So here, if you say this one was S and S was minus five, then basically IT becomes A1 plus A2 T E minus five T. 
Now, here you've been given the I0 plus and the derivative also. So, I0 plus, which is T equals to 0 plus. And this is going to give you the same result as T equals to 0. No difference, right? Which is 10 equals to A1 plus A2. Now T is going to be 0. And this also is going to be 1 because e to the power minus 5 times 0. So, A1 is 10. This way you found the first constant, A1. Now using the, the derivative of the initial, you can find the second constant. How do you do this? You come to this function that you have found. So, here you have it equals to now i'm calling it a1 here it's been called a so i have a b i'm calling it a1 and and a2 doesn't matter what whatever, whatever whatever call it whatever you want so i found a i need to find b so it is 10 plus let me call it A2. Okay, A minus. Five T. Now take the derivative, di over dt. What do you get? So here, so this is 10. times minus 5, take the, take the derivative. So here, 10 e minus 5 t, which is 10 times minus 5 e to the power minus 5 t plus. Now I have two functions here, a to, a to t times e to the power minus 5 t. So the derivative of this would be the derivative of the first one times the second one plus the derivative of the second one times the first one. So in both cases, I have A2 here. And then T, which is E minus 5T, plus minus 5, E minus 5T times T. Now, if you substitute this with zero and t with zero, you're gonna end up basically the second b or a2 equals to 50. So you need subst here substitute with this is with zero. Zero, zero, zero. You're going to end up with this function. If you want, we can do it here. So we have here it equals to 10 minus a2 t e to the power minus 5, 5 t, right? So if we it equals to 10 e minus 5 t minus 
a2 t e minus 5t now if you take di over dt so this one would be minus 5 times 10 5t and the second one would be minus a2 the derivative of the first one which is 1 times e minus 5t plus the derivative of the second one which is minus 5 e minus 5t times the second one right minus 5e minus 5t times t now here di over dt equals zero of course at t equals zero which means that minus 50 e is zero minus a2 e is zero minus five e is zero zero equals to zero right so in this case this is zero and this is one right this is plus right yeah this is here that's a plus So, A2 equals 2, so this is 1, and this is 1, A2 equals 2, equals to 50. So, A2 or B, whatever you want to call them, the constants, you want to call them A1, A2, you want to call them A, B, it's up to you, whatever you want, they're constants. We calculate them from knowing the initial value and the derivative of the initial value. So this is how we we calculate those this function. So right now, after we got a1 and a2 or a and b, now the answer, the solution would be the following: 10 plus 50 e to the power minus 5 t ampere so this is the critically damped response for my for my function okay now we have a third exercise here that uh, basically going through all what we have done for this circuit i will let you try this on your own the solution is provided so you can this is for under damped response so you need to find the constants as well knowing the uh, the initial values that you calculate from uh, the circuit here from t equal to zero when the switch was closed for a long time so I'll let you try this example do this exercise on your own and then we can go through it if you uh, need help or if you find things that unclear to you. 
So let's stop here. It's already uh, 1251. And if you have any question before we conclude, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Okay, then, then we'll uh, conclude the session here and we'll see you on Thursday. Have a good day.